Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, celebrity interviews, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. Here's your host, Cyrus Webb. Welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. But for a radio audience tuning in at WYAD 94.1 FM and WYADonline.com, we're glad that you all can be with us. Also, it's tuning in to our online affiliates around the world, including our friends at iHeartRadio and Amazon Music Podcast. We're glad you all could be with us as well. We're excited to welcome back Miss Eugenia Foxworth to our broadcast today. You all know her as the host of the podcast, The Foxworth Theory, but she's also the recent past president of the International Real Estate State Federation for the United States, and she's gearing up for a very big event that's happening in New York City from July the 10th through the 19th. The event will take place at the Fordham College at Lincoln Center on Thursday, July 13th, and what it has to do about is a topic that definitely she knows about, and that is something that has to do with something all of us are impacted by, and that is sustainable development. We're going to talk to Ms. Foxworth not only about the work that she's been able to do, but why this event is important for her, what she hopes those who attend are able to take away from it, but also I think the global nature when it comes to things that a lot of times we take for granted. We'll definitely talk to her about that as well. Ms. Foxworth, thank you again for the time. Really do appreciate it. Oh, thank you for inviting me on. It's my pleasure, and it's such an important subject now, as you said. Right. Ms. Foxworth, I think that's what is so important. When I was prepping for this segment, I definitely want to thank our friends at, at Double Exposure Media Relations for setting this up with us. I think a lot of times, you know, we hear about sustainability. A lot of times we don't think about it as something that is not just national but global. But what has it been like for you to bring attention to that, especially through events like what's taking place this month? Well, it has broadened um, the vision of most people, as you said. And we've been doing this with um, the OPSI, the International, uh, the International Real Estate Federation, mm-hmm. since the Second World War. That's when it formed to help people rebuild and things such as that. There were our members that did it. And, you know, the sustainable cities and communities are so important. We see what's going on now Uh, globally. It's not just in our own community. And um, these are things that are lacking, even though we were working on it, and the UN Habitat had been working on it. And that's why this meeting uh, that's going to be held at the UN, and ours is going to be at Fordham, the meeting at the UN is is a high-level political forum you know, unsustainability, that we aren't political, but we are involved with people and and living. And for me, um, there are a lot of things that are going on. People can't afford houses. People are losing um, their homes because of different entities coming in and they're, you know, like like for example, Airbnb, there's nothing wrong with it. The people are making 150 to 250 in uh, a night, as opposed to 1,700 or 2,500 in rental. Um, but also, there the builders, the developers, and the real estate professionals um, have to come together, you know, to make sure that after we're gone, that those after us will still have a place. To live, so that to me is the most important thing. Housing, how it's done, whether it's buildings, whether it is, um, you know, a home or apartment, it's got to be something for us to um, live in. So. Right. <laughs> I think that that is such a great point. And, again, it goes to the work, as you mentioned, that not only course that, that the Federation has been able to do, but also work that you devoted a lot of your, your time and attention to as well. A lot has happened for you since our previous conversation. One of the things, of course, are being awarded the Medal of Honor. 
uh, from the immediate past, uh, uh, immediate past president um, of, of the federation. Talk to us about about that. You know what it's been like for you to have your work and your passion recognized, Miss Foxworth, especially when it comes to not only, of course, what's taking place, you know, in, on a state level, but also, of course, looking at the, at the national level. Uh, I really got choked up when it was announced. Matter of fact, I was so concerned about my makeup running because <laughs> I was full. Um, you know, people don't pay attention to a lot of things. And nationally, I mean, this was globally. That award was global. Yeah. And And, you know, to me... I wasn't aware, and when they said all the things, not just that I did for FIOPSI, but was in communities, that's what, you know, you get that frog in your throat, and yes, I was so happy because it took 20 years, 20 years, yeah. And, and a lot of times, uh, I'm sorry. No, that's it. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, and, and I think the thing is, from what I, I've been been reading about you and even watching you, even with what you've been doing most recently, is that you're more concerned about the work than the reward. So I, I, I can imagine it, it was uh, it was a big honor for you. Oh, absolutely. And the interesting part is I said to a friend, I'm so tired of being a first. You know, <laughs> why? <laughs> but it was the fir- it was the first again for me the first the first uh, african american to get that award and the other thing is there're very few women there's a low percentage of women to have received that so for me it was an honor because they gave it to me and the timing was right i mean 20 years i worked hard not realizing how hard. right <laughs> Hard I work, but yes, it that's something that I always wanted to go to the awards dinner, and I remember after I followed the organization around, not knowing who they were, but I liked what they did and what they had done, and what they did for people, you know, and housing and go like the the cities. We were trying to do this years ago. Um, and we put data together to take to the mayors um, to say, well, we have this. How can we do this? And it, you know, didn't work. But the most, it was fulfilling because the end was I wanted to go to the dinner. I had no idea I was going to get an award. And the first time when I followed the organization and their first world conference, I paid uh, mm-hmm. money for everything, and they said, you can't go. And I said, why? They said, you don't have a Medal of Honor. And I said, okay. This time a friend said, would you like to go be my um, plus one? And I said, yes. And fortunately, I like fashion, so I got a dress, and I was prepared. So, yeah, it was very important. I think it will help a lot of young people to know that if you stick to things and you have your mind set on things, it makes a difference. It does make the difference. I, w- I want to say for those who are just tuning in, either on the radio side or online, you're listening to Conversations Live. We're excited to welcome back Miss Eugenia Foxworth to our broadcast. She's a recent past president of the International Real Estate Federation uh, for the United States. As, as you heard us say, it's known as FIOPSI. Uh, but she's also one of the sponsors of the Real Estate in Action event that's taking place. It's going to be held on Thursday, July the 13th, and it's going to be uh, in connection, of course, with the events that's happening in the United States. In New York City between July the 10th through the 19th. Um, this is an event that, that is not only about being able to have a platform for sustainable development, but also being able to really show, as you heard Ms. Foxworth talk about, you know, some of the changes that we've been able to see. I want to talk to you about that, Ms. Foxworth. You mentioned Airbnb as an example. And, and so we have seen so many changes, right, when it comes to real estate and the way that, that housing uh, is being used and developed. What has that been like for you in your tenure to see those changes? It's been very different. Um, None of us had ever seen it before, 
but mm -hmm. it has affected a lot. The Airbnb has affected a lot of people historically who had rented out rooms and apartments within the inner city. And some of those people are on, you know, are now doing Airbnb. But the people that were familiar with going into these rooms and apartments no longer have a place to stay. And I, I said to someone, you know, when you look, think of a shelter, you think of people that are on drugs or things such as that. They can't get a job. No. There are people that are in shelters whose homes have burned. The insurance companies will pay a year. The insurance companies call me. I don't have places. I don't know where to take people. And not only that, you know, the the city is giving, um, they have something uh, called SIPs or FLIPs or something, but they pay um, for studios or one bedrooms or two bedrooms for people who are working who cannot get a place. Section 8. But people who can't get places, I still can't get the uh, places. There's a nurse, and uh, she's raising her children. Uh, um, buildings burned down in one section of New York in the Heights, um, and I couldn't get places. This I never thought would happen. And when they offer me two and three months rent for just finding a place, of course, I'd go for it. That's easy money. I don't have to pay for ads. I can't do it. That's one of the significant changes. I'm now looking at a building that I that has um, the people have lived in uh, this building forever. They put a building up that uh, the cranes keep growing, and the people no longer have the use of their balconies because the building is going up there. And I never, before we used to have rules and laws, but I think now things have changed. So that's what I've seen in the 20 years I've been in the business. I've been, I mean, uh, 23 years I've been in the business. Yeah, the changes are devastating. And then there's the changes that you say, oh, my, these are wonderful, especially with the lead, you know, and the it's building for the commercial spaces where you have the fresh air and things are more natural or even the residentials. That has been a change that I think is so so positive or making uh, building buildings where you have community uh, spaces that you can all be together in the spaces if you choose, or the alternatives of doing what you want, you know, at the outdoor space. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, you know, I think, you know, as people, you have become an authority in that space, and people know you because of your work there. It's interesting, I was saying to you before you went on here, but you and I first connected, Ms. Foxworth, because of your podcast, The Foxworth Theory. So outside of everything that we're talking about here, you know, you're, being, you're participating, of course, in the event coming up as a delegate uh, of the, for the United Nations for the event. You also, of course, are very busy with your own show. What has that been like for you? To I, I think, again, showing yourself as an example, what has that been like for you to show that you can have different interests and explore those interests in the work that you do? Well, it's legitimized my uniqueness doing two and three things <laughs> at once. <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, it has been amazing because – the people that I've interviewed are some of the people whose shoulders we've all been stand we're standing on and to listen to stories in the art because I do the art, entertainment, business and fashion. All four things I like, okay? And so listening to people um from you know who names you would know, 
it's just amazing. And it's helped other people. I have people calling me, even from Europe, to say, oh, I liked your podcast. And then there are people that said, I didn't know that. It's educational. It's fun. And um, I've learned, and to me, it's just one of the most amazing things I could have done. It's helping me, and it's helping others, and it's enjoyable. Yeah. Well, a lot for our audience to be able to look out for. But, again, as I mentioned, you have the event that's taking place on Thursday, July the 13th um, that you're gearing up for, again, as I mentioned there, being able to participate in, in this summit. Um, such an important role as a delegate for the United Nations, being able to now, of course, discuss something that you are passionate about when it comes to real estate in action, but also something that's so important for all of us. Again, everyone, Eugenia Foxworth has been our guest. Again, also she has the podcast of Foxworth Theory. A lot for our audience to stay connected with for you, Ms. Foxworth. Where is the best place for our audience to go to be able to stay connected? Uh, go to the Foxworth Theory on YouTube. And also, since I own my real estate company, you can go on uh, – Foxworth Realty Online dot com, or just Google, and the Foxworth Theory. Besides being on YouTube, um, I, I have my own. So I always tell people just Google the Foxworth Theory. It pops up everywhere. There you go, Miss Foxworth. It was great to be able to catch up with you again. Thank you again for the time. Congratulations on all the great work and recognition that your work is getting. And looking forward to speaking with you again. Oh, and thank you so much. Thank you. Now, the pleasure is definitely all mine. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live. And let's go make today amazing. Take care. <laughs>